I, you know, if I break my arm and need it set, I'll consider coming back to see you. But that's about it. And all I had left was prayer, and there's nothing wrong, there's everything right about that. But that's what I did, I prayed. I said, please help me, I want to get well. But rather than being sent immediately to a homeopathic doctor by God, I was literally going into the, how would I say, the depths of learning about principles. So you might call them spiritual principles, religious principles, uh, libertarian, I don't know what, care what you call it, but the point is finding principles that I could apply in my life so that I'd be ready to hear the principles that I could apply to my life in healing. That I could see past the lies that were being told to me about one aspect, an important aspect of my life that was going to be a life or death uh, matter for me. And when I began to absorb those principles, it was years later that I met that doctor that wasn't a doctor. It was like this homeopathic what? I don't know what that is. I don't know how many of you heard the word homeopathy growing up. Anybody when you grew up? A few hands? Okay. That's not bad. It's way better than most audiences. I didn't know about it. I was kind of freaked out when I met my first homeopath. I thought, you know, what is that? You know, he started telling me all about my entire medical history. Within minutes of meeting him, he started telling me about my whole... I was like, how? I'm not giving you any tests. I'm not even saying anything. He just looked at me. I thought he was you know, some kind of psychic, right? And he just laughed at me. He says, no, I'm not psychic. That's when he told me he was a homeopath, which sounded weirder. So <laughs> this is the kind of upbringing I had. Very mainstream, very typical if there is such a thing as an American kid. And so taking the leap was scary at that point because none of it was now approved or sanctioned by that which I thought was the authorities, the authorities that would keep us safe. And my... I guess you could say my, uh, some people would say that, you know, the, the rough thing about you, Robert, is that when you start finding out about one thing, you won't let it go. You start pulling that string to find out where it goes. And I found out, uh, not only was I lied to about medicine, but I was lied to about economics. I was lied to about politics and all of these things. But yet all of the things that I applied in my healing applied equally, if not more so, to all of those other areas of my life. Which is why when I ended up in broadcast media, I could never constrict myself, okay, you're some kind of holistic healer guy, but we can't have you talking about economics, right? We can't have you talking about politics because you just know about natural healing. But the fact is that that disintegration of principle from all of these areas of life has got, has got us in, in a lot of trouble. And I talk about it in terms of our constitution. Now, most of us would know about a federal constitution, but I'm talking about this one right here. You're born with it, literally. And it's the one thing that we're distanced from almost immediately by a government-sanctioned form of intervention, which is modern medicine. Now, this didn't happen by accident, by the way. If you know your history, in 1910, 100 years before Obamacare, something happened that would set the stage for Obamacare in 2010. And that was the Rockefeller and Carnegie-inspired, funded, preordained mandate called the Flexner Report of 1910. And that was to set up and wipe out pretty much all competition to allopathic petrochemical medicine that was emerging heavily in the 20th century. And at that point, it wiped out pretty much the homeopathic hospitals, or it was on its way to do so in some years later. And I thought it was funny coming to Philadelphia because you guys have a college here called Hahnemann, Hahnemann University Medical School. Hahnemann happens to be a homeopathic doctor. He happens to be the homeopathic doctor. He was the guy in the 1790s that developed homeopathic medicine why? Because he recognized the medicine of his day was so poisonous and toxic, mercury, bloodletting, leeches, things, that he said, maybe we could do it differently. Maybe we can really honor that Hippocratic Oath concept, first, do no harm. And he developed an entire system of medicine, a Western-based system, albeit energetic, metabolic, and not, let's say, uh, reductionist in thinking, in terms of how much can we poison the body, yet it still will survive. So you have this medical university here named after the guy that the whole medical system now is trying to wipe out the competition to allopathic petrochemical medicine. So there's a whole whole world of history that I had no earthly idea about. In fact, I was fascinated because I grew up a lot in the South, the Deep South, in Georgia. And as a, a you know a Jewish kid being raised in Bar Mitzvah, all that, mom from Israel, dad from Brooklyn, we're you know the only kid. That was, I think we, were, we lived where the Ku Klux Klan, the headquarters, were. You talk about a bizarre place to go. The only thing that saved me was that my skin color was light, you know, so you couldn't see it overtly, but they didn't know what a bagel was. I think I introduced bagels to Stone Mountain, Georgia. Bizarre upbringing I had. But these, what I tell you, the, the, I just look back at my, my life and I wonder why I went through what I went through, but now I look back and I say, 
you know, it was all for purpose. It was all for reason. And I, the ailments, the illnesses, everything I suffered with were there to teach me what I needed to know to move forward, now to communicate th this message. But it's the same thing, I think, that's happening out there in the big world of America, is that we're suffering from chronic diseases, autoimmune diseases, even cancer. We could say our country suffers from cancer because we've abandoned the Constitution. And that it takes that level of suffering, and for each of us it's different. Now, for those of you here, you've already hit that threshold. That's why you're here at the Tenth Amendment Center's on Nullify Now event. But you have family members with cancer, literally, that are not open to anything holistic, for instance, to detoxify the body. They're not open to all the science on selenium. And it's the same thing with some of our family members and neighbors that are not open to the Constitution even yet because they have not suffered enough. And I'm not into suffering, believe me. I don't want to see it in people. I'm a healer. I, you know, I bring healing to people that want it. But the, re the recognition is that I wouldn't be here if I hadn't suffered the way I did as a young man, as a young boy, as a young kid. That it indelibly marked on me what I needed to know to move forward in life, to transform my life, and then transform the lives of others who were open to it. And we're in that same situation as a country right now. Now for some it won't happen until the economic collapse is here. Does that mean it's the end of the world? No. Life will go on. But it does mean the suffering will increase perhaps exponentially for those that are not hungry yet they'll get very hungry and of course for me how bad did i want to be well how bad did i want healing it was like you hold me underwater and i wanted oxygen that's how bad i wanted it that's why i made the decision i did to change my life to live it differently and the question is do you love liberty enough as if your pet is being held underwater and you want to breathe and if you don't you're not going to be willing to do what it takes to restore it now, I don't mean for everybody out there because we have this weird thing that God gave us called free will. Free will. I mean, we have the ability to choose a path in life. You know, we might like to see our family or friends make better decisions. I wanted my sister to make better decisions with her life. But the more I tried to beat her with these principles, the more she resisted. And the more the, that beating backlashed on me. And so there's another bizarre principle that I learned called the law of non-interference along the way. It's kind of a weird path we have to walk, this narrow path in between. If on one hand we want to battle, we want to fight, on the other hand, sometimes if we fight, it just, that opposing force meets us, and yet there are different things when we learn martial arts as well, and Kung Fu, that, you know, there's a, a path of least resistance as well, and there's a way to utilize energy. In fact,